Hello, and welcome to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Today, we're talking about provocation. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Mr. Simard was charged with second-degree murder. There's a provision of the criminal code that allows a person charged with murder to argue that they should be convicted of manslaughter by providing evidence to show that they committed the crime in the heat of passion. This is essentially known as the defense of provocation. Mr. Simard was trying to raise this defense, but unfortunately encountered a procedural hurdle because the offense that was considered the provocation wasn't punishable by five years or more as an indictable offense, which was a requirement for it to be considered a, uh, an element of the provocation defense. Mr. Simard argued that this was unconstitutional and that he should be allowed to raise provocation from any type of an offense committed by the other individual. Ultimately, Mr. Simard was successful in making this application and the constitutionality of that provision was interpreted as eliminating the requirement that it be punishable by five years or more on prosecution by indictment. The Crown appealed only on the issue of the constitutional question, trying to argue that the law was in fact constitutionally valid and the Supreme Court of Canada denied the opportunity to hear the case. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't feature in this series a case where the law was determined to be unconstitutional and the Supreme Court of Canada didn't, didn't interfere in that finding. But the test for determining whether something should be given leave by the Supreme Court of Canada is whether it raises an issue of national importance. And an offense uh, of murder and something so significant as to create a defense that would allow a person to be convicted of manslaughter instead of murder is absolutely something of national importance. And a determination about whether or not it's constitutionally valid to limit a person's reliance on that provision of the code to only specific offenses is of course something that's of national importance because although the court of appeal in one jurisdiction may have said okay this is unconstitutional another jurisdiction may not follow it and it raises the potential for there to be conflicts in the legal system in canada which is exactly the thing the supreme court of canada is trying to avoid by determining cases that have issues of national importance in them by refusing leave to determine this case the supreme court of canada has actually left it open for other courts to find that this legislation is constitutionally valid and to create a situation where the law is applied inconsistently as between the provinces across canada that way, if you're charged with murder in one province, you may have a defense that would reduce it to manslaughter, which wouldn't be available to you in another province. This runs completely contrary to the fact that criminal law is supposed to be the same across the Canada landscape. And so the fact that the Supreme Court of Canada didn't hear this case and didn't take the opportunity to determine these issues raises significant issues of national importance. This is precisely the type of case that they should have heard. And unfortunately, by failing to consider it and by refusing leave to appeal the decision to the Crown on the constitutional question, the Supreme Court of Canada has potentially set us up for a very difficult constitutional crisis in this country. And that's something that we absolutely want to avoid. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. I'm Kyla Lee at Acumen Law. Thank you to Brazenville Creative for putting together these videos. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends.